Shalom, and welcome to Inside the Times and Seasons, a linguistic analysis of the names of the appointed times of Yahweh. Today we will do the seventh and final feast of Yahweh, appointed time, which is Tabernacles. The Colonel says Hebrew is a dense language for dense people. A dense language means that the meaning for each word is encoded in the letters of the word. There is a system of related roots which gives a deeper meaning to each word, and the grammar of the language compresses many ideas into one word unit. We'll be focusing on the system of related roots. A dense people means... The name of the holiday in uh, Hebrew is Sukkot, and we see in Leviticus 23:34. It's the last of the appointed times mentioned. It is a seven-day festival, similar to Passover. It has another name, which is called the Festival of Ingathering, which is in Hebrew, Chag HaAsif. We'll cover that. And particularly with Sukkot, we want to remember that every festival occasion is considered to be a remembrance of the exodus from Egypt. The name Sukkot is actually plural, and the singular is Sukkah. It means a tabernacle or a booth, and it's specifically made from branches, and it is a temporary dwelling. Leviticus 23:42. And ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. We see also that uh, Yahweh has his own sukkah in Psalm 18, verse 11. He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. So that is a description of his sukkah in the heavens. Another appearance of the word sukkah is in Amos 9.11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. In the book of Jonah, after he delivers his message to the people of Nineveh against uh, his better judgment, and he goes sulking off to the hill to see what will happen. Jonah 4, 5. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth, a sukkah, and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. A parent root is a two-letter phoneme which expresses an idea but is not necessarily a word by itself, um, although in this case we will see that it is uh, used as a word. The parent root for sukkah is uh, just sach, samech, kaf. It means also a covert lair or a pavilion, uh, a hiding place. In Psalm 10:9, he lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor, where he draweth him into his net. In Psalm 27, 5, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. It can also mean, sort of by extension, a throng or a multitude of people as similar being to a thicket that is dense with trees. So the idea of branching is there and the idea of covering is also there. Uh, in Psalm 42, 4 in the King James we read this, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. However, in the Young's literal translation, he translated as booth. These I remember and pour out my soul in me, for I pass over into the booth, into the sukkah. Remember, we're talking about keeping a feast, and it's a feast when the multitude does come up to Jerusalem. So we can see maybe this psalm is referring to that. I go softly with them into the house of God, with the voice of singing and confession, the multitude keeping the feast. One of the words that's related to this root is a yiska. It's only used one time. This is the sister of Lot, but it's uh, prefaced on the idea of one who is looking forward. 
And we're going to see that all these words that uh, have this samich kaf root have to do with uh, covering and protection. In Genesis 11:29, and Abraham and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milka, and the father of Iska. Another word from this root is masach, which means a hanging, particularly at the door of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and also another kind of covering. In Exodus 26:36, and thou shalt make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework. In 2 Samuel 17, uh, Jonathan and Ahimaaz are running from Absalom and they hide in a well. In verse 19 we read, And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. In Psalm 105:39, he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. Another word, sachach, which means to hedge or fence in, to screen or weave together. Again, this idea of the branches comes in being woven together and to provide a covering. Psalm 139.13, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Uh, the NLV translates that as knit me together. Probably you know this verse. The NSB uh, translates that as wove me. So there's something about the way we are put together that has this idea of weaving branches together. Job 38.8 Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? Um, we're going to see another meaning where uh, this root has the idea of coming up to a, uh, a wall and then turning back. So the sea is, is uh, bounded, not necessarily covered, but there's a wall where the sea must go uh, back again. Nasach, uh, by extension, is a root that means to pour out as a libation, and uh, it's used also for um, anointing. The idea that the person will be covered with oil. Genesis thirty-five fourteen, and Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. So he's covering the pillar with these uh, liquids. In Psalm two six, yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, and the Young's literal translates that as anointed my king. Likewise in Proverbs 8.23, I was set up or anointed from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. We're going to look at some cognate roots of uh, Sukkah. These are roots that are related to each other by linguistic rules of sound shift. The first of these is Zacha where the Samech is replaced by the Zion. Uh, Sog, which is the wall I was talking about earlier, where the Kaf sound is replaced by a Gimel, G sound. And then there's also a spelling anom anomaly, which is Sachach. Uh, we see the Sin instead of the Samech. Zachah means to be pure or clean. Psalm 119.9 Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Isaiah 1.16 Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. Uh, in the shortened form, Zach, every time where you see that pure oil or pure incense must be used uh, for the tabernacle, this is this word, Zach. Exodus 27, 20, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive beaten, for the light, to cause the lamp to burn always. In Proverbs 16, 2, All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahweh weigheth the spirits. In Proverbs 20, 11, Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. 
This root uh, sog, which is Samech Vav Gimel, is a fence. And so we also see it meaning to turn backwards as when you reach a fence, you'll have to turn around and go the other way. Some of you are probably familiar with the term of uh, building fences around the commandments that the rabbis have done this so that we don't overstep our browns and uh, break a commandment. So they put a fence further away from the center of the commandment that we don't uh, transgress the commandment. And that word is sayag, it's the same root. In Song of Songs 7-2, Thy navel is like a round goblet, which wanteth not liquor. Thy belly is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. These lilies make the fence. Psalm 72, Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. In Isaiah 55, the Lord Yahweh hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Here we have the alternate spelling of Sachach with a sin instead of a Samech. In Exodus 33, uh, Yahweh tells Moses to hide in the cleft of the rock. He's going to pass by and show his glory. In verse 22, And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Also in Lamentations 2, 6, And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle, as if it were of a garden. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly. Yahweh hath caused the solemn feasts and Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion, and hath despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest.